Hi, I'm Kim. And I'm Holly. We'll be doing the male reproductive system assessment and the prostate exam. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Kim and I'll be your nurse today. Hi, Kim. I'm Brad. Nice to meet you. I'm just going to start off by asking you a, a few questions here for your history. Um, do you have any history of STIs? Yes. Okay. Um, are you experiencing any genital burning or itching? Nope. No. Any penis discharge? No. Okay. Do you have any history of hernias? No. Have you noticed any bulging or fullness in your inguinal area? No. Okay. Any pain or discomfort in your groin area? No. Any history of kidney or urinary disease? Frequent urination? How frequent? Like say twice or three times in one to two hours? No. Any urinary incontinence? Do you have any difficulty starting urination? Any dribbling following urination? Okay. Any foul smelling urine? No. Do you have any history of cancer? No. Okay. Have you noticed any swelling or lumps in your scrotum? Sexually active? Yes. Okay, yes. Number of partners? Okay. Uh, gender of partner? No. Difficulty maintaining erection? No. Sexual protection? Using condoms? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any alcohol use? Occasionally. Okay. Uh, how much alcohol do you say you use? Two beers a week, maybe. Okay, so um, thank you for answering these questions, and um, I'm going to need you to put this gown on. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, we'll continue the assessment after you come back. Okay, awesome. When starting to examine the testes, um, you want to note that usually the left testy hangs lower, um, and if you're cold or the patient's cold, usually their testicles will retract upward toward the, toward the inguinal canal. Um, you want to start by gently feeling testes. I'm using this. You want to note, you want to use your two fingers and thumbs, and you want to note the consistency, swelling, make sure they're the same size, nothing abnormal. No, any lumps or bumps. If there is a bump, it might indicate a nodule, which could be indicative of cancer, which is not good. Our patient seems to be lump free. The next thing we're gonna examine is the spermatic cords. The spermatic cords is a collection of vesicles, nerves, and ducts that run up the inguinal canal to and from the testes. They'll be up here. Um, you wanna you want to palpate them and see if there's any swelling. If there is swelling, it may be um, caused of a hernia. So after palpating the somatic cords, you want to move on to the inguinal region and assessing for hernias. Hi, we'll be discussing the inguinal hernia assessment. An inguinal hernia is the protrusion of the intestine through the abdominal wall. There's two ways you can do this assessment, either standing up or supine. We will be doing the supine assessment um, for the video because of our mannequin. Um, the inguinal ligaments run between the anterior superior iliac spine and the symphysis pubis. Okay, for this assessment, you wanna ask the patient to uh, lift his chin onto his chest and take a deep breath. Can you please lift your chin? And take a deep breath. 
One asks the patient to take a deep breath and hold it while bearing down. Now you will assess for any bulging in the inguinal area. You ask the patient to relax. There are no bulges. There are, there's another way you can do this by uh, asking the to, patient to resume the same position, but instead of bearing down, you'd ask the patient to cough. Can you please cough? <coughs> okay. You may ask the patient to repeat this process twice, um, just to be sure. And that concludes our inguinal hernia assessment. Okay, now I'll be performing the prostate exam. Uh, I have the mannequin lying on the side with knees to chest for video purposes, okay? So what you want to do is inspect the area for any skin conditions like cysts, warts, or hemorrhoids. You want to wash your hands and don skin, uh, sterile or clean gloves, okay? You want to make sure that your, your gloves are lubricated, and this will allow easier and less stressful penetration into the rectum. So you want to place your lubricated finger against the anus and ask the uh, patient to bear down. This will help the patient to relax the external sphincter and decrease comfort. Okay, you want to, as you enter, you may feel resistance. If you meet with any stool, it's, easy, it's easily moved out the way. But um, so, like if you enter any... Um, Resistance, it also could be a tumor. Uh, tumors will not move. So make sure you pay close attention to that. Okay, um, you wanna use your finger to fill, to fill the um, left to right, and then backwards towards you, okay? Towards me, like this. All right, you wanna make sure that you feel along the sacrum for any irregularities. Okay, you wanna place the your finger towards the patient's umbilicus. So you wanna rotate your finger like this and it should be resting on the prostate gland. So this you'll feel through the rectum wall. It'll be palpated through the rectum wall, okay? You want to assess if you can feel each lobe distinctively and also the symmetry. All right, you wanna feel if it's discreetly, uh, any discreetly firm areas which can indicate any nodules. A normal prostate would feel like the tip of your nose. Um, any firmer than that will indicate some sort of malignancy. Okay, what you wanna do is cover the patient up after you are finished. Cover the patient up and you can hand them a tissue and then you can provide them with privacy as you exit the room and they can get dressed. You want to make sure you assess any voiding difficulties, sexual problems, skin irritations, penile discharge and abnormalities. You also want to assess if the patient is allergic to any latex or any medications. Make sure to assess for any flank pain. Flank pain is a hallmark sign of kidney infection or stones. For the diagnosis, a few complications can be discovered during a male reproductive exam, one being prostate cancer. The diagnosis would be impaired urinary elimination related to dysuria and nocturia. Some interventions would be monitoring and recording INOs and assess for pain. Ensure the perineal, perineal area is clean and dry. For planning for this exam, it would entail deciding equipment needed to perform and gathering all supplies including suitable gloves, gown, lubricant, soft tissue, and lighting. Implementation, you want to provide exam gown for the patient and jot down any allergies and sensitivities and you want to use standard precautions when obtaining specimens for labs. For evaluation, you want to evaluate the overall assessment and data collected has given you all information needed for the patient. 
Evaluation of test results will determine if the patient must return for further testing or medication. Also evaluate the patient's understanding of the procedures. For teaching, you want to teach your patient self-exam techniques to check for swelling and lumps and ask for return demonstration or to repeat. You want to see STIs, warning signs, and to prevent them by wearing condoms. Counsel patients who have an STI about diagnosis and treatment. To evaluate teaching, you may ask the patient to describe methods of preventing STIs.